So this is uh, my interpretation of the electric skateboard. Um, most of my inspiration was from a blog. Uh, you just Google search how to build an electric skateboard and the guy's got uh, lots of pretty good information there. And like everyone who builds their own board, it's always a little different. So here's uh, what I did. These are Turnigy 2200 milliamp batteries. I got four. Those are all in parallel. And then I have another four. Those are all in parallel. And the two groups are in series. So the batteries are 11.1 .1 volts each. Uh, two banks in series brings it to 22.2 .2 volts and then I did my little series parallel connections there and I screwed everything into the board with really small screws I didn't pre-drill the board is a maple drop board just a generic one off eBay the board itself I think was 40 bucks I probably shouldn't have got a drop board for uh, ground clearance, but I was riding this board for quite some time without an electric setup. So those Turnigy batteries were, I think, seven ninety nine each. Everything I bought from Hobby King. Lots of people complain about Hobby King. I found that uh, after the fact, but it took about three weeks. Everything came without much hassle, so it all worked out. So batteries are seven bucks each. Eight batteries. Uh, I haven't made a case or anything for the wires yet, so I just got duct tape just to keep the wires from dragging on the ground. The speed control, 1 8 scale, uh, I forget what that was, 60 bucks or something. I used this anti-slip kind of RV foam, it's really cheap. I used that under everything, so under the batteries was three layers, on top of the batteries was a couple layers. Underneath the speed control to help limit the vibration, I put two or three layers. And then I used that plumbing around all to uh, hold everything down. The controller, there you go right there, GT2B, that comes with its own receiver. Yeah, for 25 bucks or something. Uh, I did buy for the electronic speed control this uh, programmer, I think it was five bucks, and I raised my uh, cell cutoff, voltage cutoff for each cell, I raised it to 3.4. I have yet to actually have the uh, speed control cut me out to save the batteries, and I've probably done uh, eight miles, maybe ten miles, so it's quite a, quite a good distance there with the eight batteries I get. Um, here's your motor. This was recommended on that uh, blog. It is a Turnigy 6374 model and 149 kV. So that's your RPM. So it's voltage times 149, which gives you your RPM. All those calculations are on the internet. Um, I went with a 25 drive cog, 25 teeth, and I believe my big one is, let me check on my paper here, uh, yeah, 25 is my small drive cog, and 40 teeth is the large, the large one on the wheel. I use quarter inch bolts right through the ABEC flywheels, and this kind of plate, which is a bit hard to see because the lighting's bad. This plate was just an aluminum thing I kind of ground down and it just helped the nuts to uh, torque down on a flat surface. And I double nutted everything. I double nutted everything with Loctite and it seems to be holding pretty good. So 25 drive cog, 40 drive cog, that gave me a gear ratio of 0.625 and the belt is a 65 tooth belt. So this belt is 65 teeth and that gives me a measurement from the center of this wheel to the center of the motor shaft of 80 millimeters. Again all those calculations are online and uh, I bought these 
belts and uh, cogs at I think SPI or something. It's it's on the uh, it's on the guy's blog. How to build an electric skateboard. It's all there. That's a company I use. They're great. Um, I used a Crosby clamp to clamp onto the board because I just I have a welder, but I just don't have the stuff for welding aluminum. So steel Crosby clamp, lots of grinding to make it fit properly and not rub on the uh, the wheel here. And then I went to the aluminum plate I had kicking around the garage. I bolted it in. These bolt holes are slotted. That's where I do my belt tension. And I had to lock tight the hell out of these motor mount, these motor mount bolts. They always rattle loose until I lock tighted them. And I think that's about it. Uh, so far, it's working great. Uh, one way I I always watch and keep make make sure that my uh, nuts are tight is that the wheel is slightly squished. It might be hard to see, but the one side of the wheel is a bit deformed. It's a bit it's a bit squished from the bolts, and I like that because I can always tell that my bolts are tight. And uh, that gear ratio of 0.625 gives me about 22 or 23 kilometers an hour so it, it hauls pretty good it's about as fast as you want to go you start getting wobbly over that speed unless you're really paying attention